Everything that we humans ingest in different ways must be transported to the different parts of the body. That's why we need a circulatory system. In this video, I'll mainly talk about the heart, the blood vessels and the blood pressure and how they work together. Let's start with an overview of the circulatory system. I don't think you have to copy this image. There are others that you should copy to your notes later on. Behind the sternum, we find the heart that pumps blood to the body. In this picture, the blood vessels with oxygen-rich blood are red, and the blue ones transport oxygen-poor blood. All mammals, birds, and many reptiles have what's called a double circulatory system. It consists of two systems, the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. In the pulmonary circulation, blood is pumped to the lungs where it's oxygenated. In the systemic circulation, the oxygenated blood is pumped out in the system, the rest of the body. And now it's time for you to take some notes on this too. We start by writing a double circulatory system, and then I draw a small heart here, like this. But don't copy it just yet, I'm going to make some small changes in it. First, I draw the pulmonary artery here. It transports oxygen-poor blood from the right ventricle of the heart out to the lungs. This is the pulmonary circulation. Yes, the right ventricle is to the left of the picture because it is on the right side of the body and we draw it as if we're watching it from the front. The blood is oxygenated in the thin capillaries in the lungs and travels back to the left atrium of the heart via the pulmonary vein. The left ventricle pumps the blood out to the rest of the body via the aorta, the biggest artery in the body. This is the systemic circulation, where the oxygen-rich blood is transported out to the cells in the body. The oxygen is used up in the cells next to the capillaries, and the oxygen-poor blood travels back via the vena cava, which empties into the right atrium. From there, it's pumped into the right ventricle, and then pumped around the circulatory system over and over and over again, until you die. And now, I'm finished with this picture, and you may copy it to your notes if you haven't already done that. Now, let's have a closer look at the anatomy of the heart. First I'll show you this heart diagram, and in a moment there'll be something for you to draw too. We have the right atrium here. From there, the oxygen-poor blood is transported into the right ventricle, and then pumped out via the pulmonary artery to the lungs, where it is oxygenated. The oxygen-rich blood enters the left atrium via the pulmonary veins here, goes into the left ventricle, and is then pumped out via the aorta. Now let's draw a heart. Just a small warning on the top here, I'm going to raise some stuff, so perhaps it's best you draw this with a pencil and not a pen. Anyway, oxygen-poor blood enters the right atrium via the vena cava here. From there, it is pumped into the right ventricle past the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve is a kind of a check valve, which prevents the blood from flowing back into the atrium again. When the ventricles contract, the blood is pumped out via the pulmonary artery. By the entrance to the pulmonary artery, there's also a valve called the pulmonary valve. This is also a check valve, preventing the blood from flowing back into the right ventricle again. The blood, oxygenated and light red, enters the heart again via the pulmonary vein, which empties into the left atrium. The blood is pumped into the left ventricle past the mitral valve. From the left ventricle, the blood is pumped out in the aorta. By the entrance to the aorta, there's another valve called the aortic valve, which prevents the blood from entering the ventricle again. A few words on coronary arteries and pericardium too. The heart is a muscle that requires a lot of oxygen and energy. The coronary arteries are the arteries that provide this. You can see some coronary arteries here and here. The entire heart is enclosed by the pericardium, which prevents the heart from dilating too much and also protects it against infections coming from other organs. Now let's talk about the physiology of the heartbeat for a while. There are some concepts that I want you to learn and take to your notes. The first one is stroke volume, and it's simply the volume of blood that is pumped out by the heart with each beat. 
For a normal adult male, it is approximately 70 milliliters, but it can increase with physical exertion, that is, when you work out. It can also vary quite a lot from individual to individual, depending on physical status. The cardiac output is how much blood is pumped each minute. At rest, the cardiac output is about 5 liters per minute. The last concept for now is the heart rate, measured in number of beats per minute. The resting heart rate for an adult is normally around 60 beats per minute, but this too varies quite a lot between individuals and how fit you are. Now I want to show you what happens when the heart beats. You don't have to copy the image here to the right. I will mostly use it to illustrate what happens during the different stages of the heartbeat. But first, you have to know what the sinoatrial node is. It is a bundle of nerve cells that are located by the right atrium. It sends out nerve signals that coordinate the contractions of the heart so they happen in the right order. First, the atria contract, and then the ventricles. This is why the SA node sometimes also is called the heart's pacemaker. The SA node sends out these signals spontaneously, but it is also affected by hormones and nerve signals from other parts of the nervous system. This may, for example, cause the heart to beat faster when you work out. Now let's look at how the heart beats. We start with systole, which is the main contraction. The ventricles contract, and to be honest, they contract quite some more than what is shown in this picture. Note that the tricuspid and mitral valves close, so the only way out for the blood is past the pulmonary and aortic valves, out in the arteries up here. After systole, we have diastole, the resting phase or expansion phase. The ventricles relax, causing blood to enter them again. At the same time, the pressure in the arteries causes the pulmonary and aortic valves to close. At the end of the diastole, the atria contract, forcing even more blood into the ventricles. And when the ventricles are once again filled with blood, the systole begins again. Blood pressure. Well, that is the pressure the blood exerts against the arterial walls. The systolic pressure is the blood pressure during the systole, that is, when the ventricles contract. And the diastolic pressure is the pressure exerted during the diastole, that is, during the heart's expansion phase. Blood pressure is often measured in the completely outdated unit millimeter mercury, probably because of tradition. Normal healthy blood pressure at rest is around 115 over 70, where 115 is the systolic and 70 is the diastolic blood pressure. But, as I said, this is the blood pressure at rest. The blood pressure may be much higher during physical activity. Now let's look at the different kinds of blood vessels in the body. The arteries, the capillaries and the veins. We start with the arteries. Arteries are blood vessels that lead blood away from the heart. The aorta is the main and largest artery in the body. Arteries are relatively thick, with pretty much muscle in them, to be able to withstand the pressure. You can see in this picture that there is a thin layer of epithelial cells lining the inside of the artery, and a much thicker layer of smooth muscle outside of the epithelial layer. Everything is surrounded by a layer of connective tissue. Let's draw this too. As I said, the inside of an artery is lined with a thin layer of epithelial cells, and then there is a rather thick layer of smooth muscle. Everything is enclosed by connective tissue. The arteries branch into thinner and thinner blood vessels and eventually form really thin capillaries. They are so thin that it is just enough for a red blood cell to squeeze by. The capillaries are only surrounded by a layer of epithelial cells, so I don't bother to draw it here. But through that thin layer, gases and nutrients may diffuse pretty much freely. The capillaries form a tight web throughout the body. It is so tight that it is estimated that no cell is more than 130 micrometers away from capillary. All the capillaries together have a very large surface area, causing the blood pressure to drop. 
After leaving oxygen and nutrients and then taking up carbon dioxide and waste products, the capillaries join and form bigger and bigger veins. Veins are always blood vessels that lead to the heart. In the veins, the blood pressure is also low. Because of this, the veins don't need to be as muscular as the arteries. They are still built the same way though, with epithelial cells on the inside, a thin layer of smooth muscle surrounded by connective tissue. Since the blood pressure is so low in the veins, some special tricks are needed to push the blood forward. In the veins, there are several valves preventing the blood from flowing backward, just like the valves in the heart. Let's draw a vein here to the right. I'm going to draw some stuff below here too, so make sure you leave some space for that. Anyway, let's add some valves to here and here. Now, we write like this, that movements of the muscles push the blood forward. How does that happen? Well, let's add some muscle around this vein. And now there will be some animations, so don't draw this until I say I'm done animating. When the muscle contracts, the vein is compressed, like this. What happens is that the valve to the left here, it closes and prevents the blood from going backward. The only way the blood can flow is through the right valve, which opens. So, finally, we write that the vein is compressed, the valve opens and the blood is pushed forward. By the way, now I'm done animating and you may copy this drawing. And by now, you have an overview of the entire human circulatory system.